Everybody, welcome to the latest earliest alert. A lot to discuss, especially in the longer term, so let's get all the uh, short-term stuff out of the way as we say goodbye to summer today. First off, update on Maria. As of last check, still a Cat 3 of, as of this recording. Uh, it's really uh, bearing down, certainly in the Turks and Caicos Islands. I mean, 7 miles per hour is fairly slow for that latitude, actually, so it is really taking a sweet time and working its way north. But it is going to do that. It's going to work its way north and avoid most of the Bahamas, which is good. But then notice the cone of uncertainty kind of widens as we end into next week. And yes, next week, next Wednesday, in fact, we are still going to be talking about Maria. So that's why that slow movement uh, is significant. Uh, and not only for the, the beaches and the erosion and the waves and the surf and the rip currents, blah, 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 for the East Coast, also for our weather pattern for our area, uh, Maria will play a factor that. We'll get to that in a second. Uh, but look at the Canadian model. It kind of brings it back into south of Hatteras. Uh, so it, the models are still unsure what to do with Maria once it gets into the even higher latitudes because of that forward motion being kind of questionable. Uh, and there's the remnants of uh, Jose, by the way, up there to the north. All right, we've had a downpour this morning that tracked with some lightning uh, that raced. And I've got the radar on a really sensitive mode, so let me adjust it here so you don't pick up all the fog that's out there. We've got fog and haze and mist, and the radar is very sensitive, so it's picking up on all of that. Uh, but the downpour itself, and I'll zoom in on it, uh, tracked right across um, portions of Ripley County and worked its way all the way through Scottsburg, Salem, and then as soon as it passed Salem, phew, faded out. But notice the motion. Everything's moving backwards today. Uh, part of that northeast flow that's actually in response to really Jose, uh, the remnant low of Jose, still spinning here in the North Atlantic, uh, just beating up these beaches here across the Jersey Shore. And we've got our high pressure located up here so that the two... Uh, with the high over us, uh, the flow is kind of like this, kind of around Jose. So we get an east-northeast flow, and that's why everything is kind of, uh, that's the high there. Let me finish my H. Uh, that's the reason why everything's kind of moving backwards today is because of the combination of the high position and Jose. All right. So let's talk about how the weekend's going to trend. If anything does pop later this afternoon, it'll be very isolated. I think Indiana has a more of a chance to see it pop up again. Same motion, though, moving backwards. High 91 is what we have in. We could easily get back to that 93 like yesterday. It all just depends on the amount of haze, cloud cover, and whether or not the dew point can what we call a mix down or not. And that those are things that just it makes a difference of a degree or two, and that's about it. Not a big deal. Either way, it's going to be hot. You'll know it. Now, tonight, fog once again will develop in the valleys, riverbanks. You see hints of it there right along the I-65 corridor. Tomorrow, we have a drier atmosphere. So even today, we don't have a lot to work with, but we still were able to produce that downpour this morning. Tomorrow, there's not as much to work with, so we'll take the rain chance below the 10% category for Saturday, and it looks like we'll be able to do the same thing for Sunday. So the weekend is trending drier, uh, but still very warm into the upper 80s to around that 90 degree mark. Okay? Now, it's late next week as we're going to be tracking this front moving in, and GFS is more robust with the moisture than any other model. And there's not a lot really to work with, it looks like, with this front as it passes through uh, Wednesday night and Thursday. But the kicker is actually another vort that may come down from the plains and phase with a jet. Boy, I haven't said that in a long time, have I? Um, that's a wintertime thing, is the whole phasing of the two branches of the jet. We're going from a summertime pattern to talking about a wintertime setup next weekend. It's pretty uh, wicked. Uh, but here is the overall deal. If the vort does drop down, it would then phase with the front that's coming through Thursday and you get a full-on trough, fairly significant one too over the Ohio Valley that will then lift out. That will allow them for a rainy period for us and cloud cover, which would then indicate the highs only in the 50s. Now, this would also keep us from any patchy frost issues that may develop in the northeast sections of wave country out of this cool blast that are still somewhat possible. It's around the edge of that possibility. Uh, but you got to have the clear sky and calm winds. But if you get more of a scenario of a phasing system, you're going to have some wind and you're going to have cloud cover and rain. Therefore, your lows are not going to be as low, but the highs will be somewhat uh, limited. In fact, severely limited. So that's something we'll watch. And every model is in agreement on that. And here's an example of all that. Here's GFS. Here's the Euro. Here's the Canadian. These are the operational runs at the top. These are the ensembles that got smoothed out the general ideas. You want this bottom row to all agree. Uh, but if the bottom row doesn't match its baby, if you will, if this is the parent, <laughs> the bottom row, if they don't match, then confidence is very low in that particular model. So we're looking at next Wednesday. This is when we're at the very last period of the heat. 
the ensembles all match their actual models for the most part in pretty good agreement that that's the day we'll have the last of the heat but look at the west coast and see we got a cutoff low in the desert southwest here's maria and the gfs doesn't really see the cutoff low but even the ensembles hint that something may be there it's just the euro cuts it off the ensemble doesn't though and, and the uh, Canadian hints at it, but it doesn't cut it off either. So this looks to be a catalyst in the, the setup here. How much heat energy is Maria going to pump into the ridge that's lifting out of here? And how much energy is going to be holding back here in the rockets? Because that will then determine how the trough will dig from the plains as we head into next Friday and that following weekend. All right, so here we go. Let's move into Friday. Here's where we start to see the differences. Here's that VORP moving in. Now, the GFS says the cutoff low is going to be off the Baja Peninsula, basically, to the west. The Euro keeps it still in the Rockies. Therefore, you do not have that energy that's digging in, and you have a less phased event, rather benign event, really, that takes place. Uh, the ensembles, okay, GF ensemble, uh, it hints something there. So does the Euro, and so does the Canadian. They hint something could still be there, they just don't agree on where that placement will be for any type of uh, energy being held back into the southern Rockies. The thing is, the Canadian or the Euro has a tendency to hold it back longer than the uh, GFS does, so it's interesting to see that trend there. Uh, now let's get into the full-on effect of that. The end result is fairly dramatic when it comes to that phasing. Here's the phase system right over us, hence the cool, rainy weather. Look at the Euro. It's already bringing us back to a warming scenario. A completely opposite idea, but when you look at the ensembles here, whoops, sorry, my blonde's going nuts. The ensembles agree with the trough. Even the Euro says trough, and so is uh, someone, even the, the Canadian. So the idea of a warming here right now in the Euro is not likely, uh, although this looks to be too extreme. I think it's going to be somewhere in the middle. I don't know if we'll go fully phased with the system or not. They may be uh, too far apart in timing to fully phase. It really just depends on Maria and how the ridge builds to determine how things evolve in the West Coast. I and mean, everything's little pieces to, that have to fit together. And when you got a uh, variable like a hurricane, uh, it can really throw the models off. Here are all the different model path ideas. Uh, what you see is high confidence in the trough building next weekend. What you also see, though, is low confidence on what kind of pressure level we're talking about for the Rockies. And uh, that's the reason why I think we'll have a cooler than normal pattern coming in. We just can't figure out how cool is it going to be. Is it going to be rainy? And that kind of extreme scenario. So the indices play to this. We're talking about a positive PNA for both the Euro and the GFS. That's an indicator of cooler weather for our area. But that negative NAL determines how much of a dig we will have, a blocking. And it's there. It's not dramatic, but it's there. You want the two to line up at the same exact time. And so far, they're close. They're very, very close to that happening. But I'd like to see a little more of a negative NAL to get to uh, on the GFS idea. So we'll see how it plays out, guys. We've got plenty of time to monitor it, but that's just at least your heads up. Between now and then, it's boring summertime weather. Blah.